Dear colleagues, in the following, I'm going to guide you through my presentation plan to be held at I2MTC 2020. My name is Tobias Mitterer, and I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Klagenfurt in Austria, where I am affiliated in Professor Zange's Sensors and Actuators Group. The title of my presentation is Towards Data Aggregation on Multisensor Low Power Wireless Transducers with ISO EEC IEEE 2014-50 Transducer Electronic Data Sheets. In wireless sensor networks, there are typically numerous wireless transducers transmitting their measurement data to a base station. This transmission of data is also the most power-intensive part of a wireless sensor network, as data is being streamed with a given transmission rate. To reduce the number of transmissions necessary to fully transmit all measurements, different approaches like compression, use of specialized communication protocols, and others have been developed. One of those methods are data aggregation algorithms, where multiple measurements are combined and transmitted as one. One case where data aggregation can be used is when a transducer consists of multiple sensors which stream their measurements via wireless protocols. To reduce the configuration effort when using data aggregation in a wireless sensor network, electronic data sheets can be used. The data sheets are being read by the base station and it knows the format in which the measurements it receives are encapsulated and how to translate it into information. One example of such electronic data sheets are the IEEE 1451.0 transducer electronic data sheets, for short CATS. These are stored in a machine readable format on the transducers themselves and can be retrieved by a base station, which is called Network Capable Application Processor in the standard or NCAP. Here specialized commands. In the TED standard, there is not yet a dedicated section for data aggregation, only a section for so-called transducer channel proxies, where a virtual sensor channel is defined, which consists of defined physical sensor channels. In this work, we focus on extending the TED standard to support data aggregation and bring an example of a custom data aggregation approach for transducers with multiple sensors. The approach using TEDs and transducers with multiple sensors has then also been tested in an experimental setup, once in a simulation and once with real transducers. The proposed aggregation approach focuses on a transducer where sensors with different measurement weights are connected to. In the proposed data aggregation approach, the focus lies on transducers where base rate is defined and all sensor measurement weights are factors of this base rate. Additionally, the transmission rate for the wireless protocol is defined to be slower than the measurements. This resides in a buffer on a transducer in which all measurement samples are being stored. The transducer is waiting for the sensors to measure samples. Then it stores all samples in a buffer in an ordered fashion, such that it can still be differentiated between the samples of the different sensors. Each period of the transmission rate, the transducer takes all samples inside the buffer and builds a packet from them. This packet is then transmitted to the anchor base station with the possibility of a retransmit if the base station requests it. After a backup has been successfully built, it is being stored in a different memory until it is successfully transmitted and the buffer for the sensor samples is cleared. This process continues for as long as the transducer is actively measuring and transmitting. The packet being built by the transducer consists of the following parts. The first thing in the packet is the overall number of samples in the packet. Then a so-called frame number is included, which counts the current tick of the base rate. With those two values, the packet can be reconstructed on the anchor base station side. Then the samples of each sensor are being appended in a sorted way and in a chronological order, where first all samples of sensor 1, then all samples of sensor 2, and so on, are appended. At the end, a checksum is added to confirm correct transmission at the base station or request a retransmit in case the packet gets corrupted. Through the constraint that all sensors measure at a fraction of the defined base rate, no additional information has to be added to the packet to successfully reconstruct the timeline of the measurements. Through knowing the frame number, which is current count of the base rate tick for the first samples in a packet, and knowing the measurement rates of each sensor, the timeline can be successfully restored. On the NCAP side, a so-called wireless network processor, or WNP, is connected. This WNP manages all communication protocol operations and pipelines to receive measurement packages via a serial line to the NCAP base station. For the transducer node, the first step is to write an electronic datasheet containing all important information about itself, like a unique identifier, meta information about the transducer, channel information about each sensor, and actuator channels, and others. When a transducer first connects to the NCAP base station, the NCAP requests the tests from the transducer, and after receiving it, 
parses it and configures a virtual receiver for this transducer, which can successfully reconstruct the aggregated servers. Confirm the time synchronicity and if specified in the electronic data sheet, calibrate the received samples. For each transducer, the received samples are then temporarily being stored in a buffer in the NCAP base station, and if a middleware is defined, can be relayed to an endpoint via the specified middleware. As explained on the prior slide, the NCAP needs an up-to-date electronic datasheet of the transducer it communicates with. Using the datasheet, it can configure its endpoint accordingly. Going through the flow graph, the NCAP receives the packet from the transducer via the WNP, through the threads, it knows the format of the used data aggregation approach and knows that the first received bytes define the overall number of samples in the packet. Next bytes are reserved for the frame number. After this, the measured samples of each sensor follow via the known number of samples and the information in the threads, which states how many bytes each sensor sample of each sensor consists of, the samples can be restored. Then, using the received frame number and checking it with the last received frame number of the last received packet, which is locally stored on the NCAP, the timeline of the received packet can be verified. Additionally, using the information of the measurement rates of each sensor extracted from the electronic datasheet to the frame number, the timestamp of each sample of each sensor can be reconstructed. Then, if a middleware is defined, the reconstructed samples are sent to the middleware. To support the proposed data aggregation approach in the IEEE 1451.0 TED standard, an extension to the standard is proposed as well. The current standard defines so-called transducer channel proxies. These proxies are an amalgamation of multiple defined physical sensors on a transducer. In these transducer channel proxies, the samples of the sensor can be either combined using a block or an interleave method, which just describes the method how the samples are appended. These methods are similar to the proposed approach, but still need more overhead to the, be appended to the, each packet to successfully identify each individual sensor on the anchor base station side. For the TED standard, do not only also support the proposed data aggregation approach, but additionally support the definition of countless approaches, a dynamic extension to the TED standard is proposed. In the proposed extension to the TED standard, the extension is to be added to the so-called file TEDs part of the datasheet. The file TEDs, as the name suggests, typically handles all information pertaining to the communication protocol and method used for the transducer to communicate with the anchor base station. As data aggregation can be either done per transducer, or if the transducer contains multiple sensors, or for a whole wireless sensor network. We propose to add the extension in the file TEDs. The extension consists of the field 129, which groups the extension as data aggregation. Defined are only two self explanatory fields, the field 130, in which the use aggregation method can be defined as an enumeration and chosen from the table to the left, and field 131, which declares if the time stamp information can still be extracted from the samples on the NCAP base station site after the data aggregation. The table Describing the available aggregation methods provides space for a wide range of aggregation methods to be defined and then used in conjunction with the TED standard. At the moment, only the method, if no aggregation method is used, and the method of the custom approach which is proposed in this work are defined. To verify the proposed data aggregation approach and the extension to the TED standard, an experimental setup has been created where once a simulated and once a real transducer with multiple sensors has been used and connected to an NCAP base station. For the setup, an NCAP system has been developed in Python with a Python web server to provide a control system for the NCAP and the wireless sensor network. The NCAP supports two modi. A configuration mode, where only configuration commands and information are being exchanged with all transducers, and a measurement mode, where the NCAP focuses mainly on receiving and reconstructing received measurements. A Bluetooth low energy based wireless protocol has been used for the communication. The transducer simulation was also developed in Python and connected to the NCAP via TCP sockets emulating the wireless protocol. A real transducer with multiple sensors, namely a free axis accelerometer and a temperature and pressure sensor, has also been developed. The measurement setup starts with starting the NCAP system. Then, in the first run, the transducer simulation boots up and connects to the NCAP. As the NCAP detects the transducer, the user has to request the TEDs of the transducer simulation. As soon as the NCAP has passed the received TEDs and configured its endpoint to the transducer, the user can initiate the measurement mode. 
in measurement mode, the transducer starts streaming its measurements. The ANCAP then handles the sample reconstruction, as explained before. In the second run, instead of the transducer simulation, the real transducer, as shown on the right side of the slide, is being used for measurements. The measured and stored samples on ANCAP can then also be visualized via the web server connected to the ANCAP. On this slide, the measurement samples with correct timestamps, which have been transmitted from the retransducer in the setup, can be seen. For these samples, the proposed data aggregation approach has been used. In the top figure, the temperature and the accelerometer data can be seen, and in the bottom figure, the pressure data is shown. The experimental setup has been run twice, once by using the proposed data aggregation approach and once still using the approach with TEDS but not using any data aggregation. In the case that no aggregation is used, each time a sample is measured by a sensor, it is being transmitted to the ANCAP with its corresponding sensor ID to correctly identify it on the ANCAP. As can be seen when a data aggregation approach is used, the number of bytes transmitted via the wireless link is less than in the other case, due to the decrease of the overhead information. Additionally, as the transmission rate is lower, the sending part of the transducer can be set to a hibernating mode in between packets to further reduce energy consumption. To finalize the presentation of our work, it can be said that the proposed aggregation approach has been verified through the experimental setup, and in case that the sensor measurement rates can be coordinated with a base rate as proposed, the approach is efficient. The proposed TADS extension reduces the configuration overhead which would otherwise be necessary to implement such a data aggregation approach or integrate multiple approaches into one wireless sensor network. Thank you for your time.